now into the ticket office of Disneyland. <laughs> oh boy, let's do this. <laughs> I don't think the CIA is going to be trying to hack your second gen iPod. I didn't think so. There might have been a lot of illegal music on there. I wouldn't doubt it. But, I mean. You were supposed to bring death to the flagships, not join them. That's a pill with two screens and it's open and you got to swallow it. iTunes is a constant source of embarrassment. <laughs> Behind the scenes camera crap. Uh, here, tell us about courage, Phil. Tell us about courage. I am Nadella. <laughs> I can't do it anymore without laughing. I was going to do the whole thing. Welcome, everybody, to the Calling All Platforms podcast. I'm your host today, Caleb, and I'm here with Landon. Hello. And once again, an empty chair where Wes should be. He has left a hole in our heart yet again because his job has pulled him away to go shift cheese. That's pretty much. That's that's what he's it is. It is honestly a task that he does on behalf of the greater good. So listener, be grateful. It's true. All right. I I didn't have any like wild, crazy things to say in the intro. And now I'm feeling kind of bad. Like I'm not (laughs) filling Wes's mantle very well. Uh, You know, to be (laughs) fair, I don't know if anybody really can. That's true. That's true. I mean, I've been on shoes. We've been on the lookout for a new Windows guy for years, and yet we still have Wes. <laughs> just can't find one. It's it. He he leaves shoes that are not necessarily too large to fill, but just too strangely shaped. Like my feet just don't fit in that. It's weird. Like he's yeah. got seven toes or something. Anywho, listener. We are here to cover all the great, wonderful tech news that happened in the past week, except stuff that happened to Microsoft directly or that involved Microsoft specifically, because as was just mentioned, we're not the Microsoft people. So if you're here to hear about Microsoft, then that that isn't Xbox, I guess, even though I don't actually have any Xbox news either. So yeah, if you wanted Microsoft news, I'm sorry, Wes isn't here for you. He'll be back next week, hopefully. If you're here for just the general tech news, then why don't we go ahead and get started? I'm actually going to kick us off with a piece of Google news, because that's the way this week has gone. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Now, to be clear, I saw this news in the context of Apple, so that I was looking for Apple stuff and found stuff about Google, but thought that people ought to know about this, and it definitely interests me as a person with a, a literal drawer full of old Macs sitting next to me. Uh, Google has officially launched their Chrome OS Flex. So this was something that they initially announced was going to be coming, and and it was actually in beta about this time last year uh, after they purchased a company that I can't remember the name of, but they had essentially uh, made a version of Chrome OS that could be distributed onto older devices via the cloud um, basically giving you the opportunity to do kind of a live boot USB stick and then install uh, via the web in sort of the same way that um, Linux distros do. So they were just kind of doing that, except it was the full fat version of Chrome with all of Google's features and stuff like that, not just the open source uh, Chromium OS. So it's it's been in beta for a year. Uh, but now it's officially available uh, for, I believe Google said they had vetted 400 different specific devices for use with this thing, um, which, I mean, in the realm of like all of the used laptops on the planet, obviously that's not a huge number. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but this is essentially a, a bootable OS image that lets you retrofit Chrome onto older non-Chrome devices. And it does include old Macs. So any old Macs that you've got sitting around that you might want to try and breathe some some new life into, uh, this is an option. It's essentially going to let you experience a lightweight access to the modern internet and modern internet features that you don't have with whatever the OS that your old laptop is running. And that's why I feel like this is this is better for Macs. Because, like, if you have an old laptop that was running Windows, was running maybe Windows 7 or something like that, odds are pretty good you can still download a modern browser for that because Windows 7 was supported for so long. And even if you can't, it is pretty darn easy to get Linux onto that thing or, heck, even just Windows 10. It may not run super fast or super smoothly, but put an SSD into it and it's probably fine, you know? But with Macs... Once they 
are no longer supported. The OS is no longer being updated by Apple and they update their OS every fetching year. Uh, suddenly you, <laughs> you get left behind on stuff as simple as like, oh yeah, we updated the browser to support HTML5 and your Snow Leopard machine just doesn't. Yeah. So in those situations, you're kind of reliant on the makers of stuff like, I don't know, uh, Snow Fox and, and whatnot that make these open source browsers that are compatible with those old versions of Mac OS. But it's just not, it's not a great experience to use those. And yes, it works. Like I hear you, the Mac people that are like, no, 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 I'm still using my G4 iMac. It works great. Uh, look, I think you're using great wrong in that, ten- in that sense. Right. Yes, it is functional. I will grant you that. Um, but being able to put something that is built around the modern internet onto those machines would be a better experience and would breathe new life into them for situations where you kind of just want something for checking email, browsing the internet, doing basic research, stuff like that. Um, so there's a couple of caveats for this currently does not include the play store at this time. So you're not going to get access to the Chrome quote unquote apps, which are basically browser plugins or the Android apps that are associated with those. I imagine there's like a bunch of emulation that has to happen in order for the Android apps to run. And they probably don't want to commit to making that work on old as crap laptops. So I understand that. Um, The other thing is that it does require a few things. So it requires an x86 processor. So if you're talking about Macs, that means it has to be post the transition to Intel. Uh, it also requires four gigs of RAM and at least 16 gigs of hard drive space. But to be honest, if your computer doesn't have more than 16 gigs of hard drive space, uh, what, how, <laughs> how have you been, I'm sorry, phones have had more than 16 gigs of hard drive of storage space since freaking like when, when did Apple finally switch from their lowest one being eight gigs? Was it the iPhone six? It was, was either too, the six it was or the six. Far S. too long into the series. It it was. You're not. But wrong. it was. And by yeah, that, that point in time, pretty right. much everybody else had ditched eight gig devices. <laughs> I think it was the six or six S. One of those. Yeah. And that was like a decade ago, almost. So, yeah. Okay. Um, and and it's also worth noting that this is going to erase the existing operating system on the device. It's not like you can install this alongside something else and dual boot. That's just not what this is. If you really want to do that, there are lightweight versions of Linux that you can dual boot onto even old Macs, but getting that set up is kind of a pain in the butt. So if you're not pretty technical, then probably just don't bother. Don't, don't worry about it. Um, but yeah, so that's Chrome OS flex. I feel like it's a pretty cool thing and I'm happy it exists and it is free. You know, because it's Chrome, like Chrome is Chrome is free. The software is never the reason that Google has, you know, that's why Chromebooks are so cheap. You know, (laughs) Google does not charge a licensing fee for Chrome OS because they get their money from you using Chrome OS and they harvest all your data out of that. So something to be aware of if you decide that you want to try this out on your laptop. Um, But yeah, so Chrome OS Flex. It's uh, now live, out of beta, and can be used right now. Uh, Google has a blog post slash help article thing that you can look at that will guide you through the steps of how to download the thing, get the boots drive set up, and install it onto your computer. And they also have a list of the devices they have validated it with. That doesn't mean it won't work on other devices. It just means they're not guaranteeing that it will work on other devices. But as a general rule of thumb, if your laptop is newer than about 2010, especially if your Mac laptop is newer than about 2010, you're golden. So there you go. I want someone to try and put this on like an old phone. uh, Oh, it would have to have an x86 processor, though. I don't know of any phones that ever had an x86 processor in them. Well, actually, did like those really old Windows PDAs have x86? Like they might have had Intel, some variation of a Pentium processor in them. I feel like those were all older than 2010, so it probably wouldn't work still, but it's a thought. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, I I did just find. Oh, 
It says, article says, the last x86 Android device that's widely popular was the Asus Zenfone 2 from March of 2015. What? So there you go. So there were some Android phones that had this. What the F Asus? Okay, and some, so it's newer than 2010. That's a modern smartphone. 2015, it probably had at least 16 gigs of storage on it. So as long as the thing had more than four gigs of RAM, theoretically, you could give it a shot. That's wild. The Asus Zenfone 2, was it? Yep. Okay, I'm making a note of that. (laughs) uh, Because I want to look up how much those are on eBay. And then try this out. <laughs> <laughs> that would be really cool if you could put this on a phone. Yeah, that's it. Would be seriously... very similar to using a phone, like a like a Win uh Windows, whatever, like those old Palm phones that had Windows on them. Right. The the Palm. Like was... I had a Palm Trio. That had it was just it... called Windows Mobile, I think. Right, because yeah. Windows Phone yeah. was later like was yeah. the rever- revamped version so i'm looking it up this phone does have 16 gigs that's the lowest storage option available is 16 gigs of storage okay. with two gigs of ram oh dang it two gigs of ram there is a four gig of ram option is there okay okay so you have to get one of the four gig ones why did they put an x86 processor in a phone those are like the least power of, that is the least power efficient processor architecture that we have it's an Intel Atom Z3580 is the oh. 4 gig of RAM model. Oh, that's not a that, that's not a good processor. <laughs> what the heck, Asus? Well, what were you thinking? I mean, they weren't, obviously. I mean, the Zenfone. <laughs> so, I, th- I want to say the Zenfones were ones that you could connect to a bigger screen, like a tablet device. Oh. Like the Zen book, I believe is what it's called. Like you could put the Zen phone into the back of the Zen book and it would turn into a tablet. Maybe was, that's oh, the was reason. It, was that the one that had like that weird, like sister dock thing that was sat like upright behind the monitor and yeah. you dock it in there? And I it, believe anyways. so. Okay. I don't, I don't know for sure, but I think so. There were a we few are- of those. We are super into the weeds here, listener. But honestly, <laughs> this is this is the kind of information I feel like the world needs to know. Yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm going to be looking to see how much those things are on eBay, and if they're not exorbitantly expensive, <laughs> we may be trying this out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wild. Okay. So yeah, there you go. Uh, Google news from from me. So that's odd. Um. Yep. That's all That's all the tech news that I have. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the time over to Landon to cover the Apple news, presumably. I don't <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, there is, I do actually have some Apple news, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Ah, First know. off, the most important thing that happened this week was nothing. <laughs> and something all at the same time. <laughs> but first, let's talk nothing. So nothing... Finally, officially, fully unveiled the Nothing Phone 1. And from I didn't actually watch the event, but from what I understand, it was not great. Which, <laughs> I mean, I don't, I guess oh. they were trying to do some different things, trying to be a little, you know, Carl Pay, but it, it yeah. just wasn't good from what I understand. Whoops. Yeah. It happens. Yeah. It's okay, man. We all have bad days, Carl. Just you just push through. You'll you'll make something of it eventually. Oh, he oh, he always does. <laughs> Anyways, let's talk about some specs on this thing now that we have official specs on the device. It has the Snapdragon 778G plus CPU, so this is a mid range type device, which is what we were expecting. Although it does have 120 hertz, six point five inch display. With HDR10 yeah. plus and 1200 nits max brightness. So, pretty That's decent pretty display. Solid. Yep. Can't complain about that. Now, it doesn't have 
it's not the LTPO display that is the refer like it changes from one to 120 hertz. You know, right? It does go from 120 to 60. You can have that option depending on how you're using the device, which is beneficial. But it's not like how the Pixel phones or the iPhones are with the variable refresh rate there. Right. Um, the battery is a 4,500 milliamp hour battery, so decent size. Nothing fan- nothing huge, but, you know, good enough. It's got a USB-C port. Um, it is running Android 12 with the Nothing OS skin, which is basically stock Android with a few little customization tweaks here and there. Nothing crazy, yeah. but that's, I think, a good thing. The front camera is a 16 megapixel camera. The rear cameras are 50 megapixel main and a 50 megapixel ultra wide. Um, this does have 5G on it, but like we have mentioned before, this is not coming to the US and it can work on AT&T from what I understand, but it does not connect to AT&T 5G. So mm. I think that's part of the main issue. It's not coming to the US is because it cannot work on any of the 5G networks in the US which is right. kind of, as a marketing thing, a big deal. As a reality yeah. thing, doesn't matter. But <laughs> they got to have it in marketing, so it's not coming here at the moment. Um, It does, however, come in both white and black. We did not know about yes. the black version, at least I didn't, until it was fully announced. And actually... Yeah, I, I don't think anybody was sure. Yeah. I mean, I don't know which one I like better now. They both it's look really good. I think my thing is I, I'd have to see them in person. Yeah. The black looks a little too subdued from the images I've seen sitting next to the white one. And, uh, you know, if I were to get this phone, it would be to look at. Let's be honest. Yes. So, like, that is the point. You, of this I'd phone. want the white one, the flashy one, you know, but the black one may be much less subdued in person, might be a little bit more striking in person. And I actually like the contrast of the the white lights against the black background that I think that works better for the, the glyph system on the back. So I don't know. It's kind of sixes. They both look really good. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Now they do have a few different Ram and storage options. They have eight gigs of Ram with 128 gigs of memory, uh, or storage, eight gigs with 256 gigs of storage and 12 gigs with 256 gigs of storage. And, the prices range anywhere from 400 pounds to 500 pounds in the UK and 470 euros to 550 euros elsewhere. So that is the starting price that is on par with this type of device, the mid-range specs, mid-range pricing. This is definitely a phone that's trying to compete with, say, the iPhone SE or the Pixel A series, although... Based on the camera alone, it's not going to compete with either of those devices. Yeah. Software-wise, it does seem, I mean, it's pretty on par with the Pixel because it's a very stock version of Android with, again, a few little tweaks here and there just for customization purposes. Nothing crazy. Um, One uh, potentially minor, but not, I don't know, depending on who you are and how you use your phone, It does have an IP53 splash and dust resistant rating. So it's not as good as the Pixel A series on that. Does the SC have an IP rating? Yes, it does. I think it is. It's no, I'm pretty sure it's 68 because it's based off of the body of the eight and the eight was IP68. So, yeah. So this one is not quite as good on that side of things, but again, I don't think it's that big of a deal for the majority of people, but there are scenarios where having that higher rating is going to be beneficial. Yep. Um, From what I've seen, different reviews I've read and watched, this phone does seem to be pretty decent for the price. It's, they're just going, Carl Pay is going back to his roots with the original OnePlus phones where you're getting Mostly mid-tier specs, some higher-end specs, but for a decent price. That's what OnePlus started out as, and they were really good at it. That seems to be what nothing is going for here. Um, it's nothing It's nothing fancy. Like I said, it's kind of just your 
run of the mill mid range. I think it's a higher end mid range phone. It's going to be better than mo- like your Motorola's or even your Samsung mid range phones, but it's still not quite on par with the SE or the A series Google phones. But you know, if you're n- if you don't want the SE or the A series Pixel, this is probably going to be one of your better options as long as you're not in the U.S. Like I said. Um, it, it's it's nothing fancy. Yes, it's nothing, nothing fancy. fancy. It's it's definitely so, <laughs> nothing fancy. I think I think that this phone is kind of interesting because it feels like it's there are some mid range phones that are targeting people that I don't know. Like you said, Motorola, Motorola phones t- target people exclusively based on price. Yes, like Motorola has a bunch of phones that hit like a a really closely stepped list of tiers yeah it's about every 50 dollars they have a new phone yeah yeah it's it just right through that mid-range starting from like about 250 bucks and going up to like around 500 and that's kind of where they sit they just that's where all of their phones are and it's very much like if you're looking for a phone for 300 dollars, motorola wants you to buy this one they're fine phones i'm not like slamming motorola or anything like that but they're not actually building a phone to a purpose they're building a phone to a price yeah. And they're targeting a price bracket and that's it. And, you know, like with uh, the Pixel A series and the SE iPhones, they're targeting a type of phone. You know, they're targeting a specific use case with those things. And they understand that a part of that use case is I don't want to pay a lot of money for this device. You know, it's for the people who don't use their phones that much they need a good phone they need it to be reliable they need it to just work and do its job and you know they take pictures with it and post them on social media but they're not phone people they don't they don't use their phone really for much it's just there you know and so that's kind of what those phones are and i feel like the nothing phone is not doing the motorola thing it's doing more of the iphone or pixel thing where they're targeting a use, right? They're targeting a group of people and then understanding that this group of people doesn't really care that much about how much their phone cost, right? They want it to be a little bit cheaper. They're not made of money, but they want it to be striking. They're they're going for a look, right? They're targeting the folks that like in the past, they would have bought last year's iphone because it looks really good um but they don't actually care about it being the most up-to-date phone it's just a little bit of a status symbol to have something eye-catching you know and that's that's sort of the group right they understand yes these people are on social media so here's a camera but they don't care about the photos being the best quality they just need them to work every time so it's a good phone it's reliable. It does what it's supposed to do. The software is easy to use, easy to set up, easy to understand. Does it have all of the quality of life improvements you might get out of something like Samsung's flagships or whatever? No. But does it cost half as much as Samsung's flagships? Yes. Uh-huh. So like, yeah, I, I feel like they've designed it very cleverly and I feel like it's sitting in a very interesting place and it's sort of... <laughs> It's it's for <sighs> listener. This phone is for you. If you look at the iPhone SE or the Pixel 6a, wait, 6a, 5a, what are we on? 5a. 5a. Or the, and the Pixel 5a, you look at those and you think to yourself, it's a good phone. It's a good price like that. Just looks a little old. If that's what you're thinking when you look at those phones, this is the phone for you. It's a good phone, at a very similar price, and it does not look like anything else on the market. It looks quite futuristic and very striking. So, yeah. and it's got—I like, go. I mean, I really like the design. It's got that new iPhone design, like the sides are that aluminum flat edge, which I really like. And then you've got the back, which is the main feature of this device. It's got that glyph interface with the 900 LED lights on it, the transparency thing going on it looks more modern and for lack of a better term futuristic than any other phone especially at that price point yep so i mean again if that's what you're going for if you want something that looks 
nicer, I guess, than your other mid-range priced phones, this is the one to go for. And unfortunately, the majority of the people, I mean, most people anyways have a case on their phone, and especially people in this price category will put a case on their phone. But luckily enough, nothing does offer a clear plastic case for 25 euros, or they have uh, like a little side bumper type case that's, I think, $19 or 19 euros from what I can see. So mm-hmm. they're offering something that you can still showcase the back of the phone, which again is what they're, yeah. that's the marketing thing for this phone. They want the back of the phone to be seen. And if oh, you yeah. want to actually use it to its fullest, you kind of want that to be seen. That's also like, you know, the flash of the camera. And I will say (laughs) pictures that I've seen, like comparing a regular cell phone flash for a camera versus this, this one takes much better photos with the light provided on the back of this thing versus your one or two LED lights that are normally on a phone. Yep. So that it's got that going for it because it's that soft white light. And it spreads it out really nicely. It makes for a much better picture if you're using the light of the phone. Now, if you're not using the light of the phone, it's not going to take nearly as good a low light photos <laughs> as your iPhone or your Pixel because they, it, yeah, it's just not going to. Most phones don't match that, and they're it's just the way it is. But if you are using the flash of the phone, this is the best one to use. Um, like I said, it is available now. You can go on and purchase it. Um, I don't know exactly when it's going to ship or how soon you'll be able to get it, how much supply they have in stock, but it is there. And well, the supply is is actually pretty limited right now because aren't they doing like a, like you go, you pre-order it and then they're going to basically send you an invite quote unquote. Yeah. to when you actually can buy the thing. Yeah, it's similar to what they did with OnePlus because supply strains and whatnot are going to have some issues getting it. So, I mean, it kind of makes some sense, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. All right. Now let's talk about something, shall we? So, in the wake of this phone coming out, dbrand... The company that makes skins for phones and they'd make some cases for phones, they have the best marketing in the tech yes. sphere, in my opinion. So so I mean, good. if you look them up on Twitter or Instagram for that matter, some of the snarkiest, best replies you'll ever find. It's outstanding. It's it's great. They are a good follow. Even if you don't buy anything from them, go follow them because it's it's entertaining. Oh, yeah. Honestly, at this point, I just need them to get into a Twitter fight with Wendy's. Oh my gosh, that would be so I, good. I'm not sure. I'm not sure who would win, but I want to see that. <laughs> it would be so entertaining and so Actually, worth watching. I suppose I already know what would happen. This would be like the uh, you know the the crossover comic series where they have Superman fighting Captain America or something like that, because like obviously Captain America would stand a chance in that matchup. Uh, anyways, <laughs> point is, <laughs> what actually happens is the heroes fight with each other for a couple of minutes, and then out of nowhere, a third bad guy shows up, and then they team up to beat them, and that's how it ends, and nobody's actually gets their answer resolved. But what would happen is Wendy's and Dbrand would start fighting on Twitter. Some other brand would chime in to try and, hey, I'm here too. And they would absolutely get eviscerated by both of them. That's yes. what would happen. Yes, and it would be fantastic. It would be great. And then what you ought to do, actually, is throw Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool into the mix. <laughs> there you go. Get Deadpool tweeting from the Mint Mobile account versus <laughs> Dbrand and Wendy's, and man, that'd be fun. I've I've got to say, actually, Mint's latest run of ads they're pretty good. <laughs> it's because they got Ryan Reynolds. He's, yeah, he's he knows what up. he's doing. Anyways, so Dbrand came out with a skin in honor of Nothing's new phone. And you can get it on the iPhone 13 Pro Max, the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra, and the Pixel 6 Pro. 
Those are the only phones that it's currently available on. But this skin basically turns those phones into a nothing phone. It looks like that. It's got the transparency look to it. It's white. It looks like it's got the... like. It basically looks exactly like what the nothing phone does but for these phones it even has like this like the writing along the sides of the back of the phone and where on the nothing phone it says nothing this says something and that's just fantastic (laughs) so so clever i love it it's like it's the obvious way to to rip this off but they just did it so well and because basically what they've done is they've taken the skins for the backs of these devices that they already had that are the quote unquote teardown skins yeah. that make it. They, it's basically an image of the inside of these phones as if the back glass wasn't there. And they took that and then just restylized it, recolored it and, and whatnot, smoothed it over so that it looks like the nothing phone, which is essentially kind of a transparency of the interior of the phone, except they've kind of covered everything up with a thin sheet of like, white and gray to make it look a little bit more uniform and more more svelte so that's what they've done it's exactly that so you get the interior of an iphone complete with the iphone's unique charge coil layout for the chi charging and complete with the iphone's unique camera layout and stuff like that except it just looks like it's got the nothing treatment on it it's so good it's a good skin i wish i had one of these phones because dang (laughs) yeah i'm very tempted to buy the skin for my phone because it is just great. You know, I mean, Dbrand, they, like I said, they do a good job. Their products have always been really good and they've always knocked it out of the park with these custom things like this. This one just goes far and above anything they've ever done because not only is it just a good product and they're trolling via social media as always, but this is just a full on troll to the, extremes and it's fantastic yep i love it love it i love it i love it all right now away from nothing and something let's talk about a different device that you're probably not going to buy nor would i recommend you buy (laughs) but i have to mention it because it is just great and my nostalgic heart is loving this so nokia they are a phone company ish. They mostly make feature phones nowadays. They don't really do anything in the smartphone business because they've been bought and sold by so many people that they don't really know what they're doing anymore. Um that's true. But the newest phone that they're making is called the Nokia 5710 Express Audio. Now, they did have a phone back in the day called the Express Music and they had they actually had a series of these phones. They had a few of them. And they were all mostly kind of like, I want to say, like, I had years ago the LG Chocolate Touch. And that was a phone oh. made for playing music. They had the first, the LG Chocolate was the first one. It was a really skinny, weird looking phone. I had the one that had a touch screen on it and no, actually had like two physical buttons. It was an interesting phone. But this is along those lines. It's made for playing music type of deal. But this one comes with wireless earbuds in the device. That's so wild. So, like, if you're looking at the front of the phone, it looks like your traditional candy bar style phone from, you know, the early 2000s. It's got the, like, two-inch screen on the front. It's got your number pad on the bottom with, the you know, a couple other arrow keys and whatnot to navigate your way through this the software but then you flip it over and you have this little sliding feature on the back and you slide it down and there appears two wireless earbuds that you can use to listen to music from this device and it's fantastic <laughs> now oh my gosh if you don't want to use these earbuds for some weird like if you're buying this phone and you're not using these earbuds, I'm sorry, you're wrong. (laughs) But they do have, it does have a headphone jack if you want to plug in your own headphones because you have an old-style phone. You have to have an old-style headset, right? Right. No. You have to, you should be using the Bluetooth (laughs) earbuds with your old-school phone because that's how it should work. Holy cow. Now, 
these aren't anything great. They only, they're saying uh, you can expect about 2.4 hours, no, wait, four hours of music playback and about 2.4 hours of talk time for these earbuds. Mm. But they charge in your phone. So if you're not using them, just put them back in your phone, put it in your pocket. You don't have to carry a separate case like you do with every other wireless earbuds. That's the benefit here. I mean, come on. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. Holy cow. No, yeah, I, I pulled up a, a picture of this just so that I could look at it. And, like, I don't, I should not buy this. <laughs> but. <laughs> I mean, I it is yeah. really decently affordable. Now, I'm only seeing uh, UK pricing. I'm not seeing anything in I don't know if this is coming to the US or not but it's only 75 pounds holy cow so it's like it's 100 not, bucks it's not expensive like you get a set of wireless earbuds and a phone attached to them for less than the cost of like airpods yeah not good. a bad deal Brief. now i can't guarantee these earbuds are any good like I said, the battery. They're probably we're, not. Let's be honest. Yeah, I mean, we already know the battery is not great, <laughs> but the battery on the phone is going to be fantastic. It's got to last a couple of days, if not a week, because that's how these old phones used to be. They would last forever. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, it's it looks real. If you like, I said, listener, you got to go look this up. It's again the Nokia fifty seven ten Express Whoa. Audio. Go look it's it up. Still- it's still using a micro USB port. What? I didn't notice. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's amazing. I just, I just pulled up the the specs for their thing, this thing on their website, and it's still using a micro USB. It does have Bluetooth 5, like to be clear. <laughs> Bluetooth but 5 it's using but micro, micro USB. USB. What the heck? It has, oh my gosh, internal storage, 128 megs. Wow. It has 48 megs of RAM. Like but, three songs on this thing. Well, it has an SD card slot that yeah. goes, you know, so that's your, that's where you put your music, but oh my goodness, this thing is old weight. It includes the games, Snake, Tetris, Ninja Up. Those are all on there. So Caleb is making a few different purchases from today's podcast. Holy snot. What the heck? This is so bizarre. Wow. Yes, I should not buy that. What? I want it. So Caleb's going to be buying a Zenfone 2, this new <laughs> Nokia phone. Oh, man. <laughs> it's not a good week for me. <laughs> hey, but you may only be spending, like, at most 200 bucks for both of these phones that, combined. That's so. true. That's true. It's not that bad. And you get no. some earbuds out of it, too. Come on. Exactly. <laughs> I feel like this is a pair of earbuds that come with a free phone. Like that's <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for a hundred bucks, you could definitely get better earbuds, <laughs> but you don't get a phone with those better earbuds. It, right. So I mean, that's your charging case. It's a phone. You know? Yeah. Dual purpose. And, and unlike charging cases for most of these truly wireless earbuds, the battery is replaceable. The thing has a removable mm-hmm. battery on it. It does. It does. So that's environmentally friendly right there. Good job, Nokia. Yes. <laughs> and so, okay, not only is your charging case for your earbuds a phone, it is also a uh, game console <laughs> because it has <laughs> those games really on like it. like Snake. <laughs> yes. I mean, who doesn't like Snake? Come on. That's, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. You know, in high school, I took... Uh, I can't remember what the class was called, but we used F- Adobe Flash a lot to to make mm. programs and stuff. Yeah, and because I am me, I would get done with my projects relatively quickly because I knew the software really well. I could do it; it was fun. I ended up making my own version of the Snake game and would just play it for hours. <laughs> and I mean, because. That game is just universally loved. It's just a great game. Yep. So, I mean, like, yeah, it is. This phone is everything right there for a hundred bucks. <laughs> Ready to go. All right. And speaking of 
uh, questionably calling something gaming. Um, <laughs> that really goes really well into my next topic. So perfect. Um, listener, a while back, about oh, was it about a year ago that in Apple Arcade they brought uh, Oregon Trail back to the realm of being able to use it. I can't remember. Yeah, it's like eight months or something like that. Sometime last year. Well, yes. The developer for this game has outdone themselves, in my opinion. They've made for the Apple Watch Oregon Trail Step Tracker. Now, this does not require you to have Apple Arcade and the Oregon Trail game installed already. This is its own separate app that you can download from the App Store. And I did just that because I have an Apple Watch and I love the Oregon Trail and I had to have it. All this is is what it says it is, the Oregon Trail Step Tracker. It links up with Apple Health, so it knows how many steps you've taken, and then it tells you how far along the Oregon Trail you have gone, based on how many steps that you've taken throughout since you've started using this app. And I love it. (laughs) It's nothing fancy. It's got the cool 8-bit graphics from back in the day on there. You can choose your character. It's got about 10 or 15 different characters you can choose from, which is kind of nice. And then it shows how far along you've gone. It gives you a zoomed out map, as they call it, of all the different forts that were along the Oregon Trail and how far you are getting towards those. But then if you zoom in, as it says, it shows all the different camps that they most people would have made doing the Oregon Trail and how close you are to those. And it is great. It does. The only notification that I've gotten from this app so far is about once a day, it notifies me, hey, this is how far you are along the Oregon Trail. Simple as that. And then you can go in as often as you want to check it. But, I mean, having the once a day notification is good enough for me. And it's it's great. I really wish that it would include a, a watch face with this. Mm. because that would be really cool but i haven't found that there may be one somewhere but i haven't seen it so i don't think there is one but that would be great other than that i really really like it it's just another way to track your steps if if the little ring on the little activity ring that apple supplies isn't quite good enough for you this is it's a more you've fun got, way. You've got eight months to get from Missouri to Oregon, <laughs> and if you don't make it, you die in a snowstorm. So I, I really like... wish that it would, you know, if you're not taking enough steps throughout the day, it would say that you died of dysentery or something like that. <laughs> no, what I want it to do, I want future updates to also track stuff like your heart rate and your blood oxygen level and like all the other stuff that the Apple Watch tracks and like watch those for symptoms of you know dysentery and and that kind of thing and then tell you like hey you might have dysentery (laughs) just to freak people out that would be fun (laughs) so yeah that is the newest apple watch app that i'm really enjoying oregon trail step tracker like i said it is available in the app store i don't know if this would work without an apple watch it is just in the ios app store I know you can track steps with just a phone. It They do have that capability. But when I downloaded it, it just opened up on my watch. So I don't know. I haven't tried on just the phone. But it is fantastic. So there uh, you go. It says only for Apple Watch. Ah, yeah, there it is. That would be kind of nice if they were to make something available for non-Apple Watch users. Yeah. But, I mean, it makes sense that okay. it's on the watch with the way the interface is it works really well maybe they've built it into the arcade app i could check that maybe that would be neat nice little add-on yeah but anyways that is all of my news for this week awesome love it that's you got some good news got in fact honestly it's a lot of good news this week just yeah just good news yeah, all of it. Good I news mean, vibes. Even the nothing phone, I think, is yeah. decent news. Oh, yeah. As much no, crap I, as I, we have been giving that for that company and that phone over the past six months, it's good, decent look, phone. 
they named themselves nothing. They were asking for it. That's mm-hmm. all like, and they must have been expecting it surely. Yeah, all I, right. would, I would hope so. Well, that's fantastic. And you know what? We're just going to go ahead and can continue on with the good news vibes uh, into our gaming news. I've got a couple of items for you, listener. First off, for all you Nintendo fans, uh, w- okay, Um, I guess this wasn't originally a Nintendo thing, uh, come to think of it. Bayonetta, which is a franchise that is not E for everyone, uh, very much not so, um, <laughs> about... <laughs> about a i guess she's technically a, a witch or something that fights evil question mark using <laughs> weapons formed out of her hair which is also her clothing so anytime she goes to you know punch somebody with her hair her clothes fly off this is very much a game that was designed by men for men let's be honest anyways nintendo bought that franchise weirdly <laughs> <laughs> Landon's very confused. <laughs> it's okay. We're all confused. Um yeah. they they bought the franchise, they added her to Smash Bros. And then back in 2017, that the Landon's confused again. <laughs> yes, she's in Smash Bros. Ultimate. Anywho, wow. in 2017, Nintendo announced that Bayonetta 3, third entry in the franchise, was under development. And we now, as of this past week, have a release date for Bayonetta 3. So for all you Bayonetta fans that have been wondering, when the heck are you actually going to be able to get to play the third installment in the franchise? October 28th, 2022. So this year, later this year, that's the official date for now. So there you go. Good news for you folks that have been waiting on that for five years. Like, wow. Sorry. It's been a while. (laughs) Yeah. I mean. I I was on the bandwagon of waiting for StarCraft 2, so I can relate. Like, I know what it's like to wait literally a hundred years for a game. But Mm -hmm. there you go. Bayonetta 3 is coming. Now, my my last piece of gaming news uh, is just... I I have run out, listener, you're aware. I, I ran out a long time ago of, like, unique ways to thank and compliment the doom modders on the internet they make everything uh way more interesting and honestly i don't know my my heart goes out to them it's just it's really hard <laughs> to just express look positive emotions we're talking about doom modders again so there was a modder this past week posted a 15 minute video on his YouTube channel. Uh, cannot remember the guy's name because it was not a pronounceable word. It honestly was just looked like a string of characters, kind of like uh, IDDQD, which is the sort of thing that you might find as a console command in Doom. Just anyways, um, he got a source port of Doom. So ported into the source game engine. Uh, so this port is called Chocolate Doom. He he got Chocolate Doom running inside of the dos version of doom 2 <laughs> um oh that's he, amazing <laughs> he figured out a way to get assets inside of doom to run a separate executable inside of doom and he got it so that it shows up like on a wall like in the game as a texture kind of thing and then he's able to use a different set of key bindings to to play doom inside of doom <laughs> that is fantastic <laughs> it is uh, look we've 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 done we've gone through this so many times at this point listener yes we've run it powered by potatoes we've run it on a hundred different types of computers atms truck dashboards we've played this thing on like Lego bricks and pregnancy tests and just everything in between. It's everywhere, including (laughs) inside of itself. And I don't know, this is, it's the rabbit hole that just keeps on going. And I don't know what's next. Um, Like it's, it's very much the kind of thing. Every time a new device, like a new revolutionary piece of technology is announced, I half expect the first thing, to be able to do with it is play doom like 
at this point. You know, we keep talking about all the AR goggles that are being developed by various companies. Google is reviving the glass for consumers at some point. Apple is rumored to have AR glasses that are coming out next year, so on and so forth. Honestly, if you're not able to play Doom on these devices by literally like a month after they're released, I will be stunned. So, yeah, there you go. Doom modders, still just the best people on the Internet. I <laughs> uh, I don't know. There's nothing else to be said, really. That is fantastic. Uh, now, now they need to have... They need to have uh, Doom being played inside of Do- the Doom version that is Tim Allen. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that's man. That Tim Allen one. I just <laughs> I occasionally remember that and just go back and watch the YouTube video just for. <laughs> That one is hard to watch in just my for opinion. the aesthetic of it. It is. It's difficult to watch. It's kind of hard to listen to too. It's just yeah. so like uh so much Tim Allen. Ah. <laughs> it's Tim the Tool Man Taylor everywhere. Oh, uh, it's good though. Like it's it's exactly the kind of wacky that I would expect out of something like that. Well, listener, that brings us to the end of yet another episode. We're so grateful for you for tuning in and joining us for the Tech News Roundup for this past week. And we hope that we'll uh, see you again next week. If you want to get in touch with us, you can do that on our social medias, on Twitter, Facebook, at Calling All Platforms. You can also, you know, send us emails at uh, podcast at callingallplatforms.com. And you can find us on YouTube, Calling All Platforms Tech and Calling All Platforms Gaming, or Patreon at patreon.com slash callingallplatforms. Uh, so hit us up if you you know want to do that. And otherwise, we'll talk at you next week. See ya. Calling All Platforms is a production of Supporter Sound Studios. To learn more about how you can support the podcast, go to www.patreon.com slash callingallplatforms.